Good morning, and the peace of the Lord be with you all this morning as we begin our worship service. Today is Pentecost. It's a, you know, one of the high holy seasons of the year, an important time as the uh, Holy Spirit comes to the apostles and they're able to go and share their faith to the world around them. It's a time we usually celebrate. We celebrate what we are as a church, but on this particular Pentecost Sunday, um, we are struggling because you know again we have another social racial issue that's upon us um that just uh, creeps up and we wish it wasn't there we really wish we didn't have to deal with that but as a church we need to stand strong against that we need to stand strong against all the incidences of injustice because that's what we are that's a value that jesus has and that's a value that he puts in us so please hold out in prayer all the people, the police officers as well as the people of Minneapolis and the people of color from all over our country who certainly are struggling with the same things we are struggling with in coronavirus, but also so much more in the exposed racial tensions that are creeping up in, in our midst everywhere these days. So I hope you're as sensitized or hurt by this as I am and that we realize as a church we stick together and pray for everyone and are concerned when everyone's justice is infringed. Um, this week we had a parish uh, church council meeting and we discussed our reopening plans. We will have a statement that will come out in the tidings, which uh, should be coming out in the near future, uh, either this week or early next week. Um, so uh, please keep a lookout for that because there's going to be a lot of information in it. Prayer concerns this week, we had a member of our congregation who um, contracted uh, corona uh, virus, and uh, uh, that is Stephanie Wayne. I don't know if you know her. She is a uh, nurse at um, Heritage Hall. Um, I, she was an incredible witness of strength and, um, and joy to uh, our family as um, certainly we had our my father-in-law that was in Heritage Hall for a while before he passed away. So as she, ex as she lives out her faith in her role, um, she's caught Corona, so we want to pray for her and hold her up in prayer. Also, um, Bar Barbara Cooney, Cooney and Crystal Rector, who have also um, are on the prayer list for the same reason. Today, we have our second drive-in Holy Communion. So if you're up to it, um, after this service, uh, come on out here. Uh, I believe at 11 o'clock, we will have uh, a short uh, 10, 15 minute service. Actually, you spend more time social distancing and, and you know, um, gathering and talking to our friends um, than the actual service takes place. But it is a great um, experience to experience Holy Communion um, and certainly Holy Communion in that way. Next week, we will have another Zoom. Um, meeting right after church or co Zoom coffee hour, um, please take, participate in that as, again, an opportunity for all of us in the congregation to meet and just to say hi and check in with each other as well as have uh, some conversation. I think that's the announcements for today. So with that, let us begin our order of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from generation 
to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve in your newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm-hmm.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So wurden alle vom Heiligen Geist erfüllt und fingen an, in fremden Sprachen zu reden. Jeder so, wie der Geist es ihm eingab. Bandes pneumatos aio, que erhando legin eteras glossis. Καθώς το πνεύμα ειδίδω αυτός αποθέγεστε. Να ε τόκι φα οφάλε λεβα α ε λαμάλιε μα όνι όνι ιάτε κινατόλου κατόπε ο ναου καμάτα λεα ακι χα ναχι λεα κεχε κεχε να ε τούκου εχε λαμάλιε κε ναου λεα ακι. Todos fueron llenos del Espíritu Santo y comenzaron a hablar en otras lenguas, según el Espíritu les daba habilidad para expresarse. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them, speaking about God's deeds of power. <clears throat> All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things, innumerable, are there, living things, both small and great. 
There go the ships and Leviathan that you have formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now that I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to be your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. And about judgment, because the rulers of the world have been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but I cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you, and that the Father, ha- all that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I say that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to uh, welcome to children's service. Today is Pentecost. We're wearing red, symbolizing a day when uh, when the, the Holy Spirit comes to us and, and invokes us, gets us to go up and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the people around us. It's actually viewed as the birthday of the church. So today I have a couple things to celebrate with. I have a birthday cupcake. And I have a birthday present. And I got a little closer so that you could see the um, things I have. As I said, I had a cupcake. And here's a cupcake. It's a little happy birthday cupcake. Doesn't it look good? I should take the thing. So we celebrate the, the, the birthday of the church that we've been. You know what the birthday is? How many years? Probably somewhere around 1,984 years. Um, so we have that, and I have a present. I wonder what it is.
It's in red, the perfect color for today. It is our directory, our old directory. We're hoping to do one soon, but it has a picture of people, all the people. And the gift of the church is the gift of all the people that come together for the glory of God, to share the glory of God for all to all of us. It's a gift that we receive, and it's a gift that we share. And our resource, or our ability, and our strength is in the people. And that is what we have as a gift on this Pentecost Sunday. And as you saw the birthday cupcake in the birthday present, you see that we are a church. We are a church that is a group of people that shares the love and the grace of Jesus Christ to ourselves and to the people that are around us. We build each other up in faith because it's what Jesus did that is so important. We need to talk about it and share it with the people that are around us. So thanks for coming up. Um, Let us say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and for the people in our lives that love us. And help us always to know that you love and care for us and that we share that love and care with those of us. Amen. Let us pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, on this day when we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming to us and provoking us to share your love and grace with the people around us. I want to say help us be happy, but I really might need to say help us be sad. Help us to be sad because the work that you call us to do is not completely done. That there's a, there are evils in the world of evils and justices still prevail. And at least help us to be sensitive to that. And help us understand as a call of church that we are in those struggles together. And help us understand that when we are in those struggles together, we are your church and we are happy in your church. Bless us as your community of faith in you, as we share our values, your values, with those around you, around us, personally, and as a community of faith on this, this Holy Pentecost Day. Amen. My college friend, Tim, was a soft-spoken but very expressional guy that always had a knack for getting me to do things. I remember him convincing me to go on, out on late-night rides or go to this party with him. Come on, Jerry, come on, come on. It'll be fun, it'll be fun. His bubbly personality subsided, though, in the middle of our last semester of college when we were all pre preoccupied with peddling our college education in an abnormally tight job market. And frankly, the dose of reality of job, job hunting caused anxiety and quieted our usually playful mood. Tim took educational courses and wanted to be a teacher in middle school. He was really well suited for teaching children, so he applied like he was supposed to and waited like he was supposed to. We were all applying for jobs, but that process for a college student aspiring to be a teacher is such a nerve-wracking experience. I don't know if it's that way today. They, the student would apply to the county, and then they don't have any other interaction with the county at all. The applicant never knows whether they're, you know, whether they're being looked at or rejected or not until the very, very last minute when they're being considered for, you know, a potential vacancy in the county's teaching pool. It was no fun waiting. Our Tim, our social catalyst, was not up to his usual ways. But then one day in May, Tim got a call. He was to meet the principal of a middle school about a job placement. Tim couldn't contain himself. 
I mean, so what if it was Wednesday afternoon? So what if everybody was out? Tim got a job and he needed to tell everybody instantly. He ran from door to door in his dorm. He ran to the student center and told the lagging lunch bunch crowd. I saw Tim on a walkway between buildings as I left my class. I knew instantly by his walk that he had good news. He came up to me and barely could get the words out. Jerry, I got a job. I'm going to be a teacher. Nothing in the world could keep that message inside of him. He had to share it. It was part of who he was. It was part of what we really loved about him. Today is Pentecost. We know the exciting story of the rush of the violent wind with the divided tongues of fire. We know of the excitement of the apostles had proclaiming Jesus to the crowd. And when we hear this story, you know, I think of Tim. I tend his excitement about getting his new job. For Tim, like the apostles, realized that the good news of Jesus Christ was part of them. It wasn't something that they talked about or preached about. It was as much a part of them as their arm or their leg. They were telling the world what they knew to be true, and they put themselves out there as part of the truth that they shared. And their example and their commitment and their passion was that foot in the door for the people hearing the truth about Jesus Christ. And people have lived by that truth ever since. The truth of the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, has been with us. Some of us have experienced it. Some of us have seen it. The Spirit of Truth has a joyful side of realigning our relationship with God and Christ Jesus around love and around hope and grace. The Spirit of, Jesus, uh, the Spirit of Truth calls us to proclaim that as his church. But the spirit of truth calls us to a different set of standards, too. And that standard is Jesus' standard. As he says, when you do this for the least of these, you do it to me. And that standard is from the God that gives us all grace and love. That standard gives all people grace and love. We, as a church, are the platform for dispensing Jesus' grace and love to other people. We, as a church, care for people so that they may know that that grace and love exists. And that's what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what it means to be filled with the spirit of God's truth. This morning, as we celebrate the formation of the infusion of the Holy Spirit into us to form the church, God's will leading us, we are called to care for the things that God cares about. I am not necessarily in a celebratory mood. And to be honest, I don't think God is happy either. If we are to be Jesus' hand and feet in the world today, then we can't be happy either. I am sorry, I wish I could, but I just can't put the two, these two deplorable racial incidents that happened this week behind me. I really wish this issue of racial injustice would go away, but it won't. I really wish I just could not think about it anymore, but I can't. I really wish I didn't have to speak to you about it, but as I called an ordained pastor, I have that responsibility because we are the church and we are the church because we hold up God's values to the world. At this time, I don't know what else, what things I can do to help. What, what, what kinds of things can we do? But I do know I need to say I care. And I do know that we need to say we care. We need to say the same grace we celebrate is the same grace that people of Minneapolis and all around the country and all around the world can celebrate today. I need to say that as the church, we are sad and angry that we have not rid ourselves of this evil of injustice. 
So I say to you who are also sad and angry or who are perplexed with all the injustices this week, that we are the church. We hold all of us together, regardless of race, and we hold up the people of color that are the daily victims of injustice. And we look for ways that we can be a happy church because we are a happy church when we are all together. We are a happy church when we can struggle together. We are a happy church when we share the love of Christ and his grace to all. Because God knows there are places that really need it. Let me tell you a little more about Tim. Tim took the happy-go-lucky attitude to the school children of Baltimore County. But Tim had a big heart, and after a while, he wanted to do more. And about five years or so into his teaching gig, he received a call for gain ministry. And he's been serving as a Catholic priest for some 30 years now. He's currently the pastor of the Basilica of St. Paul in, De- in uh, Dakota Beach, Florida. He's knee-deep in the struggle of his congregation, which has a very, very Latino, large Latino following. And like the apostles on that special day of Pentecost, we proclaim what Jesus has done for us. We proclaim the love and grace that has been shared for our sake and for the sake of every living person. And we hold up others and ministers others in ministry that do the very same thing. We do that in our proclamation, and we do that in our personal response to injustice. Because Jesus did it in what he said, and also in what he did. It's Jesus' will and his values that hold us together as a church. It is Jesus' values that reflect his love that is something real that we all have to share. It is Jesus' values values that we can celebrate with everyone. It's Jesus' values that we have the joy of getting to work for. Happy Pentecost. The peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and with everyone. Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of truth, that your word of love and grace is the truth that is a part of who we are, and also is the truth we share as we speak of your presence with us in our good times and bad times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations, activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each of us, give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for all those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially Stephanie Wayne, Barbara Cooney, and Crystal Rector, and three children, and those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As, we have led, as you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We care as friends. We love as family. And, and we serve as Christ. We care as friends, we love as family, and we serve as Christ.